What can we learn from political contributions? Are there parts of the country that consistently contribute more to conservatives or liberals? What is the fraction of corporate contributions versus contributions from individuals? How do contribution patterns change over time? Is there a relationship between contributions and results of elections? Can we use contributions from a specific group, like let's say banks, to predict results of an election? We'll try to answer those and other questions using data on political contributions and data analysis. In this video we're going to take political contribution data and import that data in a local storage. Once we have this data locally, we can integrate it into existing databases or generate richer reports. Ultimately, we want to derive new knowledge and competitive advantages by applying data analysis to imported data. In this iteration, we will limit the scope to just importing the data and displaying it locally to users. This gives us an opportunity to test our software development stack and importing procedure. First, we need to import and clean data. Once we're satisfied with the quality of our data, we can display it locally. This seems like a trivial task, but it will lay the foundations for all the future iterations. To clean the data, we'll use two programs. One is Apache Avro, and another one is Hadoop. Apache Avro is serialization framework. It's an excellent alternative to storing data in text files. Hadoop and PIG is the framework for storing and analyzing large data sets. This flexibility is very useful as we can change data structure as we learn more about data with each iteration. We'll store data displayed by web application in MongoDB. MongoDB is a great database for storing unstructured data. It is similar to Hadoop Unlike Hadoop, we won't be using MongoDB to clean data. It is merely there to provide data for our web application. Next, we'll use Flask as our web framework. Flask is lightweight and programmed in Python. In fact, we could have used any framework. The reason we chose Flask is because it's lightweight and easy to modify. Flask is the last item in our software stack. Now that our stack is defined, let's do some actual data processing. First, we download data file from Government of Canada website. Next, we use Python program to import that information into Avro. Once we have data stored in Avro, we can write queries in Hadoop and Pig to clean and process data. Because this is the first iteration, we won't be doing any extensive cleanup. Perfect. Now that we're happy with our data, we can import it into MongoDB. Since Flask is lightweight, it doesn't take long to configure basic pages to display our information in web application. It looks like the goal of this iteration has been achieved. Let's do a quick inventory. We set up a software stack that allows to import, clean, and display data. We download political information data clean it up and display it locally in our web application. In next iteration, we'll extend our data to include more parties and more elections. We will also need to improve data presentation in Flask. Finally, we'll start doing some rudimentary data analysis to generate reports and graphs. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time.